Nah, you good. Took, took a while to make it happen. Man, it, it, we all good. We all good here, man. I want to salute you on your last mm-hmm. performance, bro. You look spectacular, bro. Thank you. Um, you made it look real easy. Um, tell me, man, as far as training camp is concerned, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand about Gulam training camps to, to get to that, especially that you had a layoff. Speak a little bit about that. Um, training camp's always intense, you know, dealing with the – my fault, I cut off. But um, training training camp always is always intense, you know, especially being with uh you know Kevin Cunningham, you know um we always have a spectacular camp, and um you know we just went in there and did what we had to do. We drew up a game plan and executed it, and got the you know stoppage victory. You know um I'm I'm happy about the win, but I wasn't satisfied. And then they came with this uh. Jesus Ramos fight. It's a fight that I asked for. I asked for that fight before my last fight. And um I'm excited, man. I'm excited. It's a big stage. And um Canelo on the know, card. Yeah, yeah, Canelo on the card versus Charlo. And um I'm ready to, I'm I'm ready to do my thing, man. You know, I got a young kid in front of me trying to take my spot, you know, looking to, you know, take off in his career. And, you know, it's my job to Run him over because he's in the way too. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. He's a big guy, got a high KO ratio. Um, you know, he just came off a big win with Joey Spencer. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about your opponent. I mean, what you, what do you think? You think uh, what's your prediction in this fight? Obviously, you know, he has a uh, close to a perfect record. Yeah. Um, like I said, man, he's he, he a young kid. Um, but to be honest, he ain't fighting nobody. Mm. He's young, you know. They 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 built him up nice. They gave him the right fights, and he did what he had to do. Now it's for, it's time for him to take a bigger step, fight somebody that you know is real. Because all those other guys, you know, they could fight, and you know some of those guys were battle tested. But those are the guys that he's supposed to be. Now he's in a fight where, you know. They don't know if he's gonna win this fight. They don't they they he looking at he look he's worried about this fight. You know, and um I'm I'm here to I'm here to take over take over the division. And I'm excited. I'm excited to go against this kid. Um yeah. I feel like skills pay the bills as well. So um it's it's gonna be an exciting matchup. It's gonna be a very exciting matchup. And um we we, we drawing up the game plan right now. We're in training camp. We just uh, fought a couple weeks ago, and now we got a couple weeks to go. So, <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, he he seems like a a pressure fighter, decent volume, a hard puncher. What do you think you can expose um, in this fight that he hasn't seen? Some looks that you haven't seen. I mean, looking at your fight last fight, you look super sharp. Yeah. Um, but coming into this fight, like you said, he hasn't fought nobody. So talk to me. Yeah. I mean, what do you think the difference is between you versus some of the other guys that he's faced? Um, well, I'm Southpaw as well. Mm-hmm. I'm a real Southpaw. I feel like the, the other Southpaws he's, he's been matched up against were, um, pretty much tailor made for him. So, uh, I feel like I'm gonna bring everything different. I got a different punch of power than those guys. I got different skills than those guys different experience. I've been in there with better fighters. I beat um former world champions. I've beaten prospects. I've beaten the Olympians. So um you know, I'm I'm just a total different fighter than what he's used to. How excited is like this moment to be on this stage um on the uh Canelo undercard and knowing that this is kind of like a a make or break situation for your career and also a down halt in his career to be able to stop that train. Yeah, um this is important, man. This is important. You know, I'm I'm more excited that, you know, I get to be right back in the ring after after a win, after a big win on the uh, Adamus Julian Williams card. Um I was I was looking to I was looking for a dance partner. I was definitely looking for a, a, a good dance partner this next fight, and we found him. We found uh, this kid Ramos. I asked, I asked for this fight, 
and you know, um, matchmakers and PBC, they just delivering big fights all year. So I'm glad to be a part of it, and I'm gonna take full advantage. Shit, it's time mm. to be world champion. The time is now. You know, he's a young kid, he's 22 years old. You know, and they might just be giving him a step up too early. I was 22 years old when I fought Charlo, and you know, it may have been too early. Charlo was 27 years old. I'm 27. Now the rose is it's flipped. It's I'm 27 right. fighting a 22 year old. So, yeah. so you're basically I, a, a vet in the game now. Yeah, I'm a young vet. I'm a young vet. Young I, vet. I, I feel I feel great. I feel great. I'm still getting better. I'm still improving my skills. I'm in the gym every day. And um September 30th is lit. It's on, it's on. Yeah, very excited about that. They just kind of like souped up that card right there. Um, don't know too many people that are in the undercard, but when I found out you were on the undercard and finding out that Jesus Ramos was your opponent, I was like, this is, this is great. Now, um, last time we spoke, you know, like you said, you was in the undercard of the Julian Williams and Hadamas fight. Now, they're, they're campaigning at 160 pounds. You're campaigning at 154 um, so you basically said that you would want the winner of that fight. I think you said it on the mic. Mm -hmm. Um, talk to me about moving up to 160. Is it just for titles? It, can you make the weight of 154 easy? Like what's yeah. going on in your career? I mean, I can make the weight out, uh, for 154 easy. I just, uh, you know, I, I want I want a big fight. I wanted the big fights. I want a title, title fight. Um, the, the the fights at 160, it couldn't happen. I wanted to fight Adamez because, you know, I thought he was going to end up being elevated as champion. I thought they were going to strip uh, Charlo. Charlo. But, you know, that never happened. So there's no. No, there's no there's no point in me, you know, trying to trying to fight somebody without the title on, at 160. So Not the real title anyway. Yeah, right, right. So they came with this Ramos fight and – you know, I think this is the perfect matchup because I, I, I asked for this. I've been asked for this. That's big because, you know, you're you're becoming the hunter, you know, not saying that you haven't been. But you've always been um, going into, like, your career. You could tell that you don't really – you don't say no to, to opposition. Whatever, whoever's on the table, you just say just bring it on. That's right. what it seems like. Right. Yeah. Um, now, um, you know, and this is a big fight because this is a big guy at 154 pounds. I mean, I think he's probably the biggest guy at 54 when it comes to size. Um, you know, um, now going into that, to the, the 160 division, like if you, uh, like you said, you would just entertain it just for a title fight. But other than that, you you make the weight just fine. I, I, I do plan, up, plan on moving to 160, you know, eventually, but, you know... Um... 154 is where I want to campaign and become a champion at and, um, you know, make a legacy at. So I'm here now. I like, I feel good. I feel comfortable making 154. And it's, and it's an exciting weight class. You know, there's a lot of fights. Um, guys like Spence is coming up. And Crawford's Craig coming Crawford. up. Yeah. Spence and Crawford's coming up. So, you know, th this, this weight class is backlit. You know, I, I was around when, Julian Williams was on top. Jared Hurd was on top. All those other guys was on top. But, you know, they faded, and I'm still around. Most of those guys, they they, they fell off or, you know, they're, they're at a different weight class. And I'm still here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, speaking upon those two guys, uh, we, have, we spoke upon your prediction on that fight. Give me your reaction on that fight, you know, with Spence and Crawford. I mean... Did we, um, I look like the whole boxing world didn't I, see that coming. Yeah, I, I think I was right, though. I think I was right. I, I think I picked Crawford when we last You spoke. did? Yep, you yeah. did. And, you know, um, Crawford, he just, you know, stylistically, I feel like, you know, he just had his number. He had his number. I don't think uh, a rematch is going to be any different. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, uh, obviously it was a one-sided fight. Um you saying that the rematch at 54 won't do anything different. Um, but moving forward with other opponents for Spence and Crawford, I mean, we're, we're talking about a lot of different uh, opponents, obviously, especially with Crawford. Um, 
Spence, uh, you know, a lot of people like to ride people out, and you know this when, you know, uh, you have a performance like that. Um, other than Spence, like a lot of people were talking about, hey, the weight drain, uh, the car crash, whatever the case may be, not to give any excuses out, because I like giving, you know, the just dues to Terrence because it was a beautiful performance. But right. what did you see in that night? Did you see a different Spence? Did you see a weight drain type of a situation? What did you see? Um... It could be, it, it could be maybe a little bit of both, but I feel like stylistically, Crawford just had his number. I feel mm -hmm. like you know Spence's style is, you know maybe his trainer's the one to blame, but his his style just it, it stood the same. He didn't really switch up anything, and Crawford just had his number. You know, mm. Spence has a he has a real uh, basic style, if you ask me, and um, he wasn't he wasn't able to get out the way of those shots. <clears throat> Crawford just, you know, he was on another level. Facts, facts. Um, you know, speaking upon, like, you know, I I always said to myself, you know, when it came down to Spence, he started his first pro, uh, do, uh, pro debut at 54 and started campaigning at 47. He had an opportunity to fight Miguel Cotto at 54 for a title and denied it to stay fighting, I think it was Lamont Peterson at, at 47. I yeah. always thought that he was kind of like, not necessarily a weight bully, but kind of like a weight bully for the division. Does that make a difference when it comes down to moving to 54, going on in his career from now on, moving forward? No, nah, I think uh, I think he fits right in. I think he fits right in. He's a, he's a pretty, you know, big guy. Um. Yeah, I, I just I think he fit, he fits right in. It's gonna it's gonna be exciting with him in the division, even uh, Crawford. I feel like it's gonna be exciting with them boys in the division. But um, I feel I feel like Crawford is more on his way out. He's looking he's looking for a fight with just Jamel or Charlo, and then you know he might be ready to hang him up. You know Spence, we'll see uh we'll see what he has to say about you know his future and how he's gonna move on, but. That's definitely a fight after this Ramos, you know, after I take care of business on the 30th, I'm looking forward to. Right, right. You're, you're right in that mix. Um, and it would, you know, obviously we can't, we, we got to keep it a hundred. You know, they got him at A side for this fight. So you would be obviously um, disturbing all his future plans. Yeah, but my resume, my resume way better than his. Facts. Re way, way better than his. You know, he's fought guys like, um, Luke Santa Maria, Vladimir Hernandez. Um, um, those guys aren't on my level. I would have right. did, did the same shit to those guys. I would have mm -hmm. the same. I, I would have stopped those guys. I would have beat those guys up. So, yeah. you know, this this is his first real test. You know, this is his first real test. And you know, from what I'm I'm watching him fight right now too. By the way, <laughs> I'm watching him fight. But um, I. I'm a way different fighter, man. I'm a way different fighter than what he's used to. You know, you know, a lot of people, they don't know what I'm going to bring to the table. They don't know if I'm going to fight. They don't know if I'm going to go in there and I'm going to box. I got it all. So they're going to see on September 30th that I'm one of them ones. Mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm the real deal. Because, you know, like I said, I fought. I've, I've been at the top of this weight class since 2015. Yeah, I was about to say, it's been almost a decade. Yeah, it's been almost a decade. You know, the only thing I haven't done was, you know, win my world title, which, you know, I know is coming. You know, I, I took a I took a step up too early fighting Charlo, but I was daring to be great. Mm -hmm. But um, 154 is for the taking, if you ask me. Um, Charlo just moved to 60. He, well, I don't know if he's moving up, but he's, he's got that Canelo fight, and that's still a fight I want. Fundor, that's still a fight I want. So you know, I got I gotta I gotta take care of business on the thirtieth, so I could get get in those sweepstakes, Fact. You know, get those get those real big fights, get those pay per view fights, you know. But Fact. but you know, like I said, I was I've been at the top for a while now, so you know it's time to capitalize on it. The time is now. It's time to be, you know, that dude in this weight class. It it a win over Jesus Ramos would definitely put you in the top discussion. Like, you yeah. got to be honest about it. Like, yeah. you know, there's been so many people that are talking about, even like Danny Garcia, they're saying, hey, who should he fight? 
to yeah. you know make like because because I know there was discussions of him and Lara. Uh, mm. Don't know where that fight's happening, but if you really want to test yourself at mm-hmm. this fifty four division, your yeah. name always gets brought up. Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, speaking upon um, you know Terence Crawford and um, Jamel Charlo, you yeah. shared the ring with both of them. And I remember asking you the other day, um, what would you think about, you know, um, that type of fight, that predicament, that prediction? And you told me, I got to wait and see what happens with Spence and Crawford. Now we've seen it. What do you, what do you, what do you see? What do you believe in now? Uh, I feel like um, Crawford got everything in his toolbox. He got, he got a lot of, a lot of skill, a lot of IQ. And um, I, I I feel like he'll beat Charlo, but I feel like it won't be easy. Charlo got he has he has a great IQ. He he don't have much skill, but he got big power. He's athletic, and he has a great IQ. But Crawford, I feel like he's just all around. Maybe he's not a super big puncher, but he got that power that's gonna knock your ass out. So I feel like I feel like he he's the better fighter if you ask me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, and for it'd the pro- it'll probably be it, it'll probably be way more competitive than the Spence though for sure. Way more, yeah. Way more competitive. and a lot more drama. I seen for both sides. Yeah, you know, Charlo's a animated type of dude, so it it'll, it'll be it's it'll be an entertaining fight. Um, speak a little bit upon what you just mentioned for the fans that are are watching and the fans that are going to be watching as far as the differences between skill and IQ. Yeah, I mean, skill, IQ, that's what take you far in boxing. That's what take you far. And, you know, we, we, we watched it firsthand with Mayweather. He he fought the bigger guys. He fought dudes that was tougher than him. He fought dudes that was faster than him, dude that was punch harder than him. But, you know, your IQ, you, it, it, it'll take you far. It'll take you far. You just, you know, you got to be locked in. You got to be dialed in. You got to be focused when you go in there. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's what the fans can expect from me on – um. Um, September 30th. I feel like a lot of people was writing me off because, you know, I've actually fought people. I actually fought. I've been in competitive fights against real people. You know, he he's putting on these one-sided ass whoopers against, if you ask me, nobodies. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in my behalf, even with the Joey Spencer, I think Joey Spencer's small enough to uh, campaign at welterweight. Yeah, Joey, Joey Spencer. I mean, I take nothing away from Joey Spencer. I think he's a He's an all right fighter, you know, but, you know, um, Jesus Ramos was, if, if they asked my prediction for that fight, I would have, I would have predicted the same way it went. Mm. You know, they would have asked my predict, I would have predicted that the same way it went. Joey Spencer, he, I don't think he cream of the crop. I don't think he's one of the elites in this division. I looked at him like, you know, it's a food guy that's always on TV. They, they want to move him a little bit, you know. He's strong. He got the look. He yeah, got he's got the look. look. You know all that type of stuff. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Um, you know, m- moving on to uh Charlo and 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 be and you know Terrence. Just one more time. You know, you've been there to be be able to share the ring with Terrence. Mm-hmm. What other things that you believe that he can expose on Charlo that he will become victorious the way you say? Um. I feel like his uh, counter punching ability. He was like with Spence. He was able to like punch on the in between and like he was real accurate. I feel like that that'd be almost the same thing with Charlo. You know, they're trained by the same dude. The style is, you know, not too similar, but almost a little bit. Almost, yeah. They yeah. stay in the front foot a lot. The way, yeah. But, Char- but Charlo's. Way more athletic, like he he athletic. He moves around. He gets himself Better out of trouble. Footwork. Yeah, you know he he's been working with Juan Guzman. You know I, I'm I'm real familiar with Guzman. I've mm-hmm. been around Guzman when I first turned pro, so I know I know how you know Guzman what, what his what his mental is on. He he's teaching fighters basically how he fought. You know he was a real slick fighter. You know, I think, former I think champion, right? If I'm correct, he's a former yeah, champion. Yeah, I think so. I think, but he, 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 um, he definitely, he definitely is improving Charlo's style. Correct. So you see that he kind of makes the difference maker when it comes down to coaching. When it comes to that, 
that yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Absolutely. Um, you know, moving on to, you know, Jamel um, and Canelo. What's your prediction on that fight? He's he's jumping two weight classes. Um, do you believe that that's a little bit too much? You've been in the ring with him. Is he a really big 54? So it's not necessarily happening two weight divisions, quote unquote. He could kind of fill in nice. Or do you think that he's biting a little much than what he could chew? Is this a 50 50 or what? I don't think it's 50 50, but I feel like. Yeah, I feel like uh, Charlo, uh, he's bigger than Canelo. I feel like Canelo's, he's been moving up. You know, he moved from 54 to 60 to 68, 75 and all that. You know, but I think Canelo's like, a, he's probably a real 160-pounder, if you ask me, you know, just by his height or even a 54-pounder. Yeah, um, he kind of has your frame. Yeah, yeah, he's... um. You might be a little taller. yeah. Yeah, facts. I think he's like five eight, five nine, some shit. He's he's real short, but you know he's compact. Um, I feel like Charlo's gonna do well if you ask me. I I think he's gonna do well, you know, going up those weight, going up that way. He don't got he don't got no weight to lose, so I think he'll be uh he'll be comfortable. Mm. And um, we'll see. We'll just see, man. I I I believe I believe Canelo uh is gonna win though. You think he's gonna stop him? I don't think he's gonna stop him. No. You think he's gonna go twelve? I think he's gonna go twelve. I think Charlo's gonna um do enough to make it a little competitive and not get shocked. Mm, mm. He'll probably put off a better performance than Caleb. Maybe. 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 And I and I, I respect Caleb. And I you know, I think he's a great boxer, but I think Charlo got um some pop. He's a little mean. Yeah, he got pop and he's a little mean, so you know, he's in there trying to rip Canelo head off. You know, Caleb did a lot of boxing, did a lot of moving, and ended up um, maybe burning himself out a little bit. But, right. Yeah, but but Charlo, I feel like he, he'll do some educated movement. I feel like he's going to be throwing some shots that Canelo got to respect. And, um, you know, Canelo's going to have to figure that out. Mm. And if he can't figure that out, then he he's in trouble. Shit. Right. Right. So you kind of give it like a 45-55 type of a thing. More like 60-40. 60-40 Canelo. Mm -hmm. More more acclimated to the weight class. And, and he, I mean, when it comes down to skills, a lot of people, high-level coaches that I spoke to, say that Canelo possesses the better skill when it comes down to Charlo. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I don't think Charlo – I'm not too impressed by, by Charlo's skill, his skill level. I'm just impressed by his IQ, his athleticism, and, you know, his, his power is pretty good. Seems to me that people say that he has good timing on his right hand. He probably do. It ain't. And that's what kind of saves him because, like, he loses a lot of rounds if you really look at, you know, the, the fights that he has won. Yeah. You know, he loses a lot of rounds and he, he ends up getting the KO to kind of, like, save him. Um but nevertheless, uh, that was definitely a great breakdown when it comes down to uh, Canelo and um, Charlo. Now, when we talk about um, other fights that they're trying to, you know, put in the makings as well, you know, uh, Boo Boo Andres and Benavides, it seems to me that this is in talks for November. Stylistically, how do you see that fight uh, and who do you favor? Um, I'm favoring Benavides on that. Yeah. The Mexican monster. Um, Boo Boo, I feel like um, his style, you know, he has a good style. He boxes well, but I just feel like Benavidez is too big, too strong, and he's fast. You know, he's not going to stop coming. He got, he got some skill to him, too. He got some defense. He's not just walking in the front door, letting you punch on him. I mean, he can get tough. He can put that on, but I feel like um, he's, he's going to get the job done. He may, yeah. he may, he may stop him. I don't. Know. We'll see. Do you think it's the inactivity that Boo Boo has had in his career, or do you believe that you know it's just the size, it's just it's, it's just the speed, it's just the caliber of opponent that's in front of him? Yeah, that. Yeah, just that caliber. The size, the speed, that that type of opponent, you know. 
Right. We seen the fight. We seen the fight with uh, with Caleb and Benavidez. You know, that's almost the same style that Boo Boo Andre possesses. You know, and um, Benavidez. I mean, I, I don't feel like Benavidez really does all that like well with boxers and movers and stuff like that. But um, I don't think uh, Boo Boo doesn't enough to like, you know. Like beat Benavidez. I don't think he like boxes. He boxes well. Don't get me wrong. I don't want. I don't want people twisting my words. But no. But his punch output's not high, not too high either way. Yeah, he's his punch. His, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying. He, he, yeah. he he's a he's a good fighter. He just I don't think he's gonna do enough to stop Benavidez from doing getting that. on his ass. Exactly, exactly. You 100% when it comes to that. Yeah. He likes to just let Browns just slide by and let them be close. You never yeah. know where they're going to rule it. You know, what type of style of judging and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, it's very important. Um, and I feel like that's why, like, when it comes, like, you guys are completely opposite if you really think about it, right? You're, you you know, when you feel like you're up in the head, you, go to, you get aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You try to yeah. not leave it to the judges yeah. versus him. It's just, the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. um, Regis Pro Grays and, and uh, Devin Haney. You know, it's a it's a cool it's a cool style when it comes to matchup. Um, obviously, uh, Regis Pro Grays had um, a, a difficult time with Daniel uh, Zurilla. Yeah, uh, some people also say that's, that, the dude, that's the dude he just fought, right? His last fight. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. And then um, Devin Haney seemed like he had some trouble with. Uh, you know, uh, Lomachenko as well. But then again, Lomachenko stylistically is an amazing fighter, you know? Yeah, I think he's a fit for everybody. I think Loma, he's a fit for everyone. Yeah, because you could lose against Loma, you'll probably be better in your next fight regardless. Yeah, yeah. But I, maybe uh, that Zarilla dude, we didn't we didn't know who he was. Maybe he, he was one of those guys that you just, you probably slept on and he, he show up that night, you know? So. A hundred. It's boxing. You got you got to come ready for everyone. That's a hundred percent. Yeah, I asked Regis before the fight. You know, do you know anything about your opponent? He said, Nah, not really. Um, gearing up to this fight, obviously, the uh, negotiations are all over the place trying to get this fight to happen. But it seems like it's going to happen. Um, what you think about the stylistic matchup when it comes to those two guys? I think Devin will beat him. Yeah, think, outbox him. Yeah, I think he'll outbox him. Devin has a great jab. Um, maybe combinations that keep Regis off him too. So he, there's some things he probably got to go to camp with and you know implement. But I think Devin can do it all. You think so he can do it? There, yeah, there's certain fighters that could do it all. You just gotta you know draw the game plan up. Like myself, I feel like I can do it all. I could box, I could punch, I could go forward, I could go backwards. Um, you just gotta draw draw the game plan up. You gotta study film, see how the person. The opposing side gonna come, um, and you just gotta be able to adjust in that ring as well. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm um, you know the he's entering the 140 division. Um, very, very, very busy division. It's starting to get hot and hot. You know, every month that goes by. Your brother, I just interviewed him the other day, um, a few days ago. Richards and Hitchens. Yeah. He got a big fight coming up with Jose Cepeda. Yeah, How do you, I mean, obviously, people are gonna say, "Hell, he's biased, he's biased," but we gotta keep it real. Let's be real. Come on, that's gonna be a wash. That's gonna be a wash. He just told me um, that he's been recently do some rounds with you, and yeah. when I when I hear that, and I know for a fact that you are a straight puncher, yeah, it scares me for the division. To be honest with you, it it, it scares me with the division because. Richardson is starting to tolerate a big punch working with you, and he's been working with you for quite some time. His high IQ working with guys like Tank and Shakur, it's just so many different looks that right. he's watching coming into camp. But let's talk about Richardson Hitchens in that matchup and, and his future at 140 pounds. Um, I think the sky's the limit for bro. I think um I think after this fight, you know, the the he'll put the whole division on notice. He'll put the whole division on notice, and I think he's lined up to fight Regis, so or something that. like that, you know. So I feel like I feel like he's one of the best in that weight class, if not yeah. the best. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see how 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 it plays out for him. See where where they land him, what type of fights, um, um, 
what organization. But I feel like if it's Regis, I think he should definitely jump on that. Right, right, absolutely. Um, it would be, I, I think it, it could definitely be a wash when it comes down to him and Regis. Now, guys, like working with you, I feel like can get him ready for guys like uh, Subrian Matias, you know, being able yeah. to have a heavy handed guy in front of him that's going to stand in the pocket. I feel like you're a perfect work for him when it comes down to that type of a style as well, because you can mimic, you know, um, Matias' style a little bit. Yeah. Sabril Matias, he's a he, he's a dangerous fighter as well, but I feel like Richardson could beat him too. Mm. You know, I feel, like I said, man, I feel like skills pay the bills. That's yep. point blank, period. Skills pay the bills. It's called boxing. It's not called um, you hit me, I hit you. It's boxing. You got you got hit, not get hit. It, it's plain and simple. You know, some people do it better than others. Sabril Matias, he's a tough fight for anyone. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just got to be on your shit. You got to be ready. Facts, facts, facts. Now, um, Lubin, like, when it comes down to you entering the sport, like, finding love for the sport, how did you even get started? Like, how did you walk into a boxing gym? And I know that's way back. I know that's way back, but, like. Say, say it again. I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. Like when it came down to having the love for the sport of boxing and wanting to get into walking in through the doors of your first gym, like how'd that come upon? Um, I'm headed to the gym right now. Um, my older my older brother he um he was a boxer, so he pretty much just like 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 I I, I always looked up to him. I still look up to him, and he he always uh. He always brought me to the gym. He just he just brought me there and ended up falling in love with it. Mm. I just I fell in love with it. And um, you know, the rest is history. Now going into some of the comments here, um, you know, we got Thomas Morris. Lubin is gonna touch Ramos' chin like it's never been touched before. I think it's a up straight warfare. Yeah. Um. You. What do you think about that? Do you think it, you think this fight's gonna have moments of war? Um. Because you don't have. You don't need it. Plan. You don't need it to be. I'm. I'm just. I'm. Yeah. I don't need to be. I'm. I'm sticking to the game plan, and um. I'm just gonna show him something that he ain't never seen before. Mm. Mm. Yeah. In his last fight. It it just seemed that when uh when when Spencer touched him, it just didn't look like it affected him at all. Um Yeah. But obviously you have a completely different punch. Um but nevertheless, man, um just for the viewers that are here right now, the thirty people that are watching, um, you know, Lubin's out here, he's just watching Ramos's fight while we're doing the interview, and now he's on his way to the gym. So just to give you guys a little insight of, like, what this guy's all about, you know what I'm saying? I'm locked in. I'm focused. Um, I'm focused, baby. Exactly, man. And I, I can't wait for that fight. Like, oh, speaking of your fight, though, yo, you stole the show. I ain't going to hold you. I, I forgot to tell you that. Last fight, you stole the show. So, Thank you, man. Showtime better be treating you right. I ain't going to hold you. I, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> sold the show, bro. Like, I was just looking at everything. I'm like, homie's boxing, homie's sitting down and punching and just straight showing domination, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. Ho ho homie, uh, what was his name? Uh, my man, uh, Louis Aries. Yeah, he, he had nothing. You pitched a shout out, son, until it was over. Was, yeah, that that was a clean victory, clean, clean victory. Um, nevertheless, man, um, everybody knows that you are a hard hitter, and if people don't know about just your, your boxing and IQ ability, um, they just have to just watch real closely. Um, nevertheless, yes, man, um, last minute, um, you know, shout out, shout out your social media. Let people know where they can find you as well. Um, he be fighting. Uh, Ruben will be fighting in the Canelo and Charlo undercard for the people that don't know. Um, shout out to social media, bro. Let everybody know that you goddamn you back, and, and this is what it is, and yep. you here to stay. Yep. Um, IG, you can follow me at Erickson Hammer. Um, 
Twitter or X or whatever they call it now. You can follow me at Erickson Hammer L. For real, right? They it's yeah. a new it's a new logo and all that. Yeah, all yeah, that. yeah. I seen that. But um, yeah, September thirtieth. You know, we live on pay per view. Hammer time on Showtime. Got the you know, ready to cook his ass. Mm, mm. Facts. He'll be fighting uh, Jesus Ramos. Uh, Lubin, if y'all don't know, he's always in a big fight since he was a young buck. You know what I'm saying? There's no pampering careers over here. You got fighters that have the hard route, and then you got the easy route. My man right here had the hard route, and he, he's, not, he's not letting no uh, pages unturned. And um, he's not using any excuses. And that's what I like about you as well, is that there's no excuses when it comes down to your career. Um, you just get back into the lab and uh, fix the things that you need to fix. So you have a, a big uh, amateur pedigree. Uh, for the people that I don't know, let people know about your amateur pedigree as well. Um, I want everything as an amateur. I was one of the uh, ones for the... The Olympics in 2016, they wanted me to, you know, stay amateur and uh, go ahead and try to make that team. I was the number one hopeful for a gold medal, but uh, we ended up turning pro and, you know, one of the top dudes in the and at 154 pounds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who you were in camp with? Like, you know, who you been in the amateurs with that you've been around for the people that don't know? Everybody, man. Everybody. Shakur, Devin Haney, Richardson Hitchens, everybody, man, Tank. everybody. You name them. Yeah, Tank, Caleb Plant, Cool Boy Step, everybody, man. What you think about that fight as well with uh, Cool Boy and Anyway? I think uh, Anyway is different. Anyway's right? Different. Yeah, he's different. He can fight. He can fight, fight. Right. Can you believe that people in the media are actually speaking upon a tank and, and Terrence Crawford fight? Yeah, uh, I don't even, I don't even pay attention to that. Right, right. I don't right. pay no attention to that because I know it's not gonna happen. It's just that's just social media boxing. They they just want something to talk about. The clickbait special. Yeah, tank, 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 and Crawford definitely not fighting, man. Crawford right. only looking to fight Jamel Charlo or somebody like that. He can move up to 54. Right. He ain't trying to be fighting that old catch way to like 138 with tank or some shit. Or 40. Do you do you even think uh, a Terrence Crawford and Canelo could be even in the future? Nah. Nah. Nah, we heard Canelo yesterday. Right. Yeah. You know? Sometimes money make you do some some strange things and just say, yo, I'm going to move up, you know what I'm saying, test myself. Uh, but nevertheless, yeah. Eric, um, I appreciate your time, um, you know what I'm saying. Make sure you guys uh, tune into the pay-per-view. My man will be in the Canelo undercard fighting Jesus Ramos once again. Much love to you, dude. I'm going to let you do what you got to do in the gym and get ready. And God bless, and on to the next, and good luck on your fight. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks Absolutely, for bro. Anytime, man. Anytime. Sure. So there he is, guys. That's Erickson Rubin. Um, great fighter. Please, guys, smash the like button. I'm giving you guys the exclusives here. The exclusives here when it comes down to some of the hottest fighters in the game today. Mill City Boxing, home of the high-level pro boxing media. This is your boy Mills. Make sure you guys smash the like button. You know what I'm saying? Like, do do things to the like button that I wouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we got to get these uh these likes up, man. I think the likes got to go up. I think that when it comes down to some of these other channels, y'all see that y'all tune in and it, they don't they don't have a lot of this high level pro boxing media. When you see the way I talk in an interview, you could tell that I intellect the sport into actually like the IQ of it. You know what I'm saying? We don't just talk about what you think about this and this, this and that. No, we're talking about exactly what the fighter believes in his mind that can possess troubles for other fighters. This is this is a different type of an interview. This is not just your regular, regular uh, Joe Schmo interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, I appreciate everybody that rock with me as well. 
Um, anybody that's in the comments section, much love to y'all. Make sure y'all squeeze the like button. Like we still, we got 24 likes here and, um, it's much love to y'all guys. I'm going to be doing another interview with a legendary, uh, Buddy McGirt, um, high level coach. He's fight, uh, he's training right now. Tons of tons of fights. If you don't know who Buddy McGirt is, he fought a Pernell Whitaker two times. He was, he's a walking Hall of Famer when it comes down to, uh, well, he's in the Hall of Fame. And in the same time, you know, he's going to be probably in the Hall of Fame when it comes to coaching now. So uh, we'll be, you know, setting up that interview around 430. Um, I want to say God bless to everyone on the live, man. Have a great day. Um, and tune into my next video. Make sure you guys press the notification buttons so you guys can be notified for my next interview that comes up. I'm doing them spur of the moment until I start my show. Uh, we'll also have a show on Sundays, every Sunday with Zab Judah. He's my co-host for the channel. So uh, make sure you guys smash the like button before you guys leave. Much love to y'all. God bless. And on to the next. It's your boy Mills from North City Boxing. Much love to y'all.